Okay, we're going to talk about another shutdown command now called shutdown transactional. Okay, so we're logged on as user Justin. So now let's go ahead and type in shutdown transactional, like so. Transactional. And let's see what happens. Okay, it shuts down just like the immediate command did, and it doesn't care that there's users connected to the database. Okay, and a communication channel. All right, so that works just like immediate. So, what do we know about transactional shutdown types so far? If you do a shutdown transactional, it doesn't care that users are logged in. It will um, automatically disconnect all their sessions, just like immediate does. <clears throat> all right, now let's log on as user Justin. And let's go ahead and, and you can probably tell by the name what's going to happen here. And let's insert that value again into our table. So insert into names values capital J O N. And we see that our new rows in, is in our names table, John. Okay. And our transaction is still in flight. No commit, no rollback. So go ahead and do a shutdown transactional again. Do, 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 do. I'll go faster. As you can tell here, you might have noticed trans shutdown transactional is taking longer than it than it did when we first showed you. Why? Because the transaction is currently in flight. This one. So go ahead and type in commit or rollback. Rollback. It doesn't matter. Go back to our shutdown. So we typed in commit here, as you can see, and watch what happens. The database shutdown continues. Okay, and we're disconnected. All right, so we see what a tr shutdown transactional does. So a shutdown transactional, just like a shutdown immediate does not care that users are currently connected to the database, so it will automatically disconnect them and it will wait and it won't automatically just roll back all transactions, okay, and say, sorry, your, your work's all gone, we need to shut down now, okay, it's going to wait until the transaction ends. It uh, doesn't matter if it's a roll, if, you, if it ends in a roll, rollback or ends in a commit, okay, it's, it's, it's going to wait until you have signified that the transaction's done no matter what you choose to do and then it will shut down. So from this session, if we do select from select asterisk from Justin dot names, we will see that you know he's still there because we did a commit. Okay, so the transaction is waiting. Shutdown transactional is waiting for a commit or rollback, i.e., for a transaction to complete. All right, so those are our three tr um, shutdowns that we talked about so far: shutdown normal, shutdown immediate, shutdown transactional. Now our fourth shut and final shutdown. Now, the three shutdowns that we did thus far, shutdown, shutdown normal, shutdown immediate, shutdown transactional, are known as clean shutdowns, or if you will, um, consistent shutdowns. Even shutdown immediate was a consistent shutdown. You're saying, wait a minute, it makes me lose all my data. Well, your current transactions anyway. Um, your data from your current transactions anyway. How can that be considered a clean shutdown or a consistent shutdown? Well, it's considered that because a rollback, the operation is done. A rollback deletes the data. So nothing is, is hanging in memory. Everything, it can checkpoint all the data files. Users are disconnected. It is a clean shutdown. Shutdown normal, shutdown immediate, and shutdown transactional are all clean or consistent shutdowns. So the last shutdown that we're going to do here, and what I'll do is we'll do like a double whammy here. We'll log in as Justin. So we'll be logged in and we'll insert and we'll start a transaction by inserting data and not completing it by typing in commit or rollback. Rollback. Okay. Last one is a shutdown abort. See what happens here.
Wow. You notice what happened? What's the difference? So there's a lot of differences here. Check the shutdown command out here. Check the output you get. It goes through three stages. Database closed, database dismounted, Oracle instance shut down. We type in shutdown abort, it only did one stage. Oracle instance shutdown. Shutdown abort is like pulling the power out of the power pulling the power cord out of a server that, you, that your Oracle database is running on. Okay? Or spill in cereal all over your server or, what, or keyboard, whatever. Okay? Um, or in Unix world, doing a kill minus nine against the uh, database processes or killing your Oracle EXE process in Windows. Okay? Shutdown abort is. I'm not going to use the word nasty. Shutdown abort just says, I don't care what's going on. Just bring the database down. And through your DBA career, you're going to have to use a shutdown abort once in a while. I've used it in the fields many times over the, over the years. Okay? Now, I know this is going to sound weird, but the shutdown abort command is not dangerous. Remember, you're dealing with a sophisticated RDBMS. Oracle is an RDBMS, Relational Database Management System software. Okay? It can recover itself. It can recover from things like power outages and whatnot. If it didn't, it wouldn't make a dime. And obviously, that's not the case. Oracle is very successful. One of the biggest databases, most popular databases in the world. Okay? Uh, my personal view. But the shutdown, okay, so it knows how to recover itself even though all the data files are now inconsistent, okay? So the first three shutdowns that we talked about, shutdown normal, shutdown immediate, shutdown transactional, okay, are all called consistent shutdowns. Shutdown abort is known as an inconsistent shutdown, okay? But don't you worry, because you type in startup, it's going, the, the sophisticated RDBMS software will start the database back up. And it will take a little longer to start up than usual. And if you have hundreds of data files, Trust me, it's going to take a very long time to come up, um, depending on your processor and uh, your overall system speed and architecture, um, because it's recovering itself. And you'll see those messages in the alert log, by the way, that it's doing what's called crash recovery. And as you can see, it is taking longer than it usually does. We, that, that's obvious. Okay. And trust me, everything is fine. Okay. And does it do a, roll, a, a rollback? Uh, yeah, it does a rollback, okay? Um, kind of like immediate, but it's right away. You know, immediate goes to and does rollback on everyone. I'm sorry, shut... Oh God, I'm mistaken there. Shutdown immediate... To, shutdown abort does not do a rollback. And shutdown immediate does a roll... Uh, kicks users off, does a rollback... Um, a rollback to all the, all the transactions currently in flight. And then brings down the database. Shutdown abort does not do that. Shutdown abort kills the database, bam, gone. Then on the when you start the database back up, part of the recovery is the SMON backup process, which I talk about in internal Oracle database videos and Oracle architecture and design videos. That comes when that comes up, okay, the SMON background process, next time Oracle starts up, will roll back that transaction. So that's what the shutdown abort does. So on subsequent startup after shutdown abort. The Yesmon Oracle background process will um, roll that back. Okay? And I just want to show you one more thing while we're started up here. Um, if you do select status from the instance, you see that the database is open. Okay? Go ahead and do a. Sh do, um, to bring the database down in a staged manner, you can do. You can just like you can with the startup you can bring it down in a stage manner just like you can bring it up in a stage manner and stop at any stage there's really no use of doing that coming down but oracle gives you that ability anyway i never really had any reason to use it and i'll show you why okay but you always have to use this the alter database command to do a staged startup there's always reasons to do that for certain oracle database maintenance activities which you'll see through the videos and elsewhere and in your career there's always reasons to do a staged a manual stage startup but there's no reason that I had to do anyway in my career out in the field that I had to do a stage shutdown okay so type in alter database close and it's going to manually close the database for you oh. okay now 
select status, it goes into the mounted. So it goes one below from open to mounted. Now you're probably thinking, well, yeah, there's a good reason for it. What if you just need to close it to do control file maintenance and then just open it again? This way, maybe with 100 files, it could take a while, but that could be a major time saver. Nope. Watch. Alter database open. You get Aura 16196. Database has been previously opened or closed. Database has been previously opened or closed. You have to shut down the database. And we get database not open because it's never open. And start it up again or start it up in a staged manner manually in order to open it again. So once you, a, a database can only be mounted once in the life of an instance. Okay? Um, I'm sorry, opened once. A, again, a database can only be opened once in the life of an instance. And the life of an instance is, um, for an analogy, the instance is born when you do a startup command and the memory areas, the SGA and PGAs are allocated and the background processes are started and threads are started. And then um, the death of that instance is when you type in a shutdown of any sort and those are all taken down. Uh, there is a third type of shutdown I want to show you, but it's really like a restart. I was asked once, does an Oracle database allow you to just restart it with one command without typing in shutdown, whatever, and then start up? Yeah, it does called startup force. Even though you're open right now, type in startup force, see what happens. You got it. It opens the database. Now you'll notice that you didn't see any you don't see any um database close messages. You don't see database close, dismounted, instant shut down, and then you see the startup. You just see the startup messages. This is the same thing with the shutdown abort. This right here proves to us that the startup force command is a restart command. Okay, it restarts your database. That's how you restart it. But a startup force command are, is basically two commands in one, two for the price of one. If you type in startup force, you're issuing, it's implicitly issuing a shutdown abort and then a startup. So shutdown, shutdown restart, um, shutdown force command is your um, restart of an Oracle database. And it does two things, two commands in one. Shut down abort and sh then, then starts up your database startup. All right. Um, one more point I want to make. I should have made it with the shutdown immediate, but I'll make it now. Um, I have been at some sites where, out in the field, where we have a multinational database, this huge, I'm sorry, multinational, international database with thousands of users. It is unbelievably just overloaded. A lot of things going on. And we need to shut down every night to take the cold backup. Why? I don't know. Whatever. Okay? And our scripts would, we, we wrote programs or scripts that automatically logged into the database with SQL Plus and did a shutdown immediate. And guess what? 90, 90, I would say 95 or maybe even 97% of the time, the shutdown immediate would take 10, 15 minutes, even a half hour on a real busy database but it would eventually shut the database down clean and we'd get a clean cold backup and of course the backup would run for hours um, because the database is so big but you still have that other five or you know four percent to deal with some of the time I get I get a call and they would say the operators would say this database has been is hung that the cold the backup process has been hung for five hours and I log in and find out that it's still stuck on a shut the last thing they did was a shutdown immediate the database is still stuck on shutdown immediate, and I would have to go do a shutdown abort. So what I did for that you for that um, in that field, what I what I did in the field is I went ahead and I changed it from a shutdown shutdown immediate to a shutdown abort. So when the cold backup runs every night, it logs in SQL Plus, it does a shutdown abort, a shutdown immediate, I mean a shutdown abort, a startup, and a shutdown immediate. Okay. Now, everyone thinks I'm crazy for doing that. Why do you want to type in shutdown abort? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Shutdown abort is not dangerous, okay? It's not preferred, but it's not dangerous. Oracle will, will be fine. It will recover itself. As long as your redo log files are intact, you're fine. And you should be multiplexing or mirroring your redo log files anyway if it's production, so you should be fine, okay? 
basically what the shutdown abort does is it guarantees it doesn't matter how many users are connected or what's going on or how many app Java applications are connected or what those applications are doing it doesn't matter how many transactions are on flight or whatever shutdown abort will bring that database down in less than a minute or even less than 30 seconds that database is coming down it's down then when I type in a startup command it may take 10 or 15 minutes okay but the startup will repair what the shutdown abort did and I don't really, really, really want to use the word repair because I did say it was harmless but it will rebuild or whatever you want to say um, the um, the database the startup command the startup command will reverse the effects of the shutdown abort command okay and make it consistently open then at that point there are no applications connected even though you just restarted a database and no users connected and no transactions in flight because it's now a clean database now you can do a shutdown immediate and it will close within minutes like it's supposed to because it has nothing to clean up to roll back and no users to kick out and you'll get the database shut down consistently where all the data files are, shut, are consistent it's a consistent shutdown and you can take your backup don't don't just do a shutdown abort and take the backup the, the backup is crap it won't work okay you got to do you have to do a shutdown immediate okay so what I do is I just play it safe now and I just say, look, if you're gonna if you're gonna do a staged shutdown every night, you should be taking cop backups on production databases. I'll t I'll tell people. But if you insist on doing cold for whatever reason, I suggest you do a shutdown abort. Everyone gasps in the air when I say that. Then you do a startup, and then you do a shutdown immediate. It'll be quicker, and your database will always start within a half hour of that of that. Um, I mean, your backup will always start within a half hour of the database um, shutdown process running instead of hours later sometimes okay okay that's how you shut down an Oracle database and thank you for um, list, uh, watching and I guess I'll show you the full staged shutdown alter database close I, I, I started down this path I might as well finish it alter database Dismount, shut down immediate, which you really don't need here. It shuts down immediately. It's just the instance. Database isn't mounted. Database is shut down. And then on a Windows server anyway, only, I mean, only on a Windows server, you, sh you manually shut down the service. Net stop Oracle Services Finance. Or you go to Control File Administrative um, Tools, and you, and you right-click Stop there. Okay? That's how you sh uh, for the last time, that's how you shut down an Oracle database.